Hello everyone, I am Dr. A. Kishore Kumar. I am nephrologist and renal transplant physician at uh, Pace Hospitals, High Tech City. Today I will be discussing about dialysis, hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis and what are the advantages, disadvantages of the each type of dialysis and what are the complications associated with them. Before knowing what is dialysis, we need to understand the functions of kidneys which are present in our body. We have two kidneys and they have varied functions. Most important function of kidneys is to remove the excess waste products which are generated in our body in day to day life and to remove the excess water from our body. Along with that, it will also maintain the bone health, it will try to maintain the acid base balance in the body and it will also maintain the blood glucose levels and also maintains hemoglobin levels. So these are some of the important functions of kidneys. So whenever kidneys fail, which we call as end stage kidney disease, kidneys cannot do the above uh, the said functions and all the waste products and excess water will get accumulated in our body. So if kidney fails, something has to take over the function of kidney. So the process or the procedure during which the excess waste products and excess water is removed from our body is called as dialysis. There are two types of dialysis. The first one is the hemodialysis. The second one is the peritoneal dialysis. Hemodialysis. As the name suggests, hemo means blood. So, the dialysis is done by filtering the blood directly. In the hemodialysis process, the blood is drawn from the patient and via a filter called as dialyzer is attached to a machine called as hemodialysis machine. The blood from the patient will go to the hemodialysis filter. The blood is filtered and the blood which is filtered is returned back to the patient. So this is a continuous process and usually in patients with kidney failure, the process of hemodialysis is done three times per week and each session usually lasts for four hours duration. In the peritoneal dialysis, we take the advantage of our own body for dialysis procedure. There is something called as peritoneal membrane. This is a membrane which covers our organs in the abdomen and there is a cavity called peritoneal cavity. This cavity is surrounded by the peritoneal membrane. What we do in peritoneal dialysis is we place a catheter inside in our tummy or the abdominal area and through that catheter we instill the dialysis fluid into our own abdomen or the tummy area and through this peritoneal membrane the dialysis process takes place. The waste products from the blood will get exchanged into the dialysis fluid and after some time around 6 to 8 hours the dialysis fluid which we have instilled into our abdomen will be removed out. So this is the process of peritoneal dialysis. Dialysis indication as I have already told the most important one is the kidney failure, end stage kidney failure which is irreversible. In this condition kidneys are not functioning and the dialysis will be permanent and the second one is the acute kidney injury. Acute kidney injury usually happens in patients who are hospitalized and their kidneys fail temporarily which we call as acute kidney injury and kidney recovers after some time usually. So till that time the dialysis support is provided to the patient. For hemodialysis as I have already told hemodialysis the filtration happens directly from the blood. So we need to get the patient uh, get the blood out of the patient. So this can be done by variety of ways. The most commonly the most common way by which this is done is usually a catheter or a tube which we insert into the neck or in the femoral area uh, called as dialysis catheter. From that catheter the blood is drawn and simultaneously it is instilled back into the patient. But 
these dialysis catheters have their own complications like infections and they may get blocked or it may lead to clotting of uh, the blood vessel into which they are placed. So, the permanent solution for patients who are having kidney failure is the creation of arteriovenous fistula which is also called as AVF. So, arteriovenous fistula is usually created in the left forearm and uh, this is a small surgical procedure after creation of the arteriovenous fistula in the forearm. Usually, it will take 6 to 8 weeks for the fistula to mature and through that fistula, we place two needles and through that needles, the blood is drawn and simultaneously, it is uh, sent back to the patient during the dialysis procedure. So, the prerequisite for permanent dialysis patients is the creation of arteriovenous fistula. For peritoneal dialysis, as I have already mentioned, the peritoneal dialysis takes place in our own abdomen or the tummy area. For that, we need to place a tube core catheter into our abdominal area. This is also a small surgical procedure. After placement of the peritoneal dialysis catheter, it will take around 2 weeks for the catheter or the wound to mature after which the peritoneal dialysis procedure can be started. If we take advantages of hemodialysis, hemodialysis will be done 3 times per week and it will be done only for 4 hours duration in the each session. So, patient will uh, have to come to a dialysis unit or a hospital where the procedure is done and need need to stay in the hospital for 4 hours duration 3 times per week and uh, in the rest of the in the rest of the days in the week he can be free and do he can do his own work and uh, the most important uh, disadvantage or the complication of the hemodialysis is the complications which can happen during dialysis the most important one is the drop in the blood pressure called as hypotension during hemodialysis whatever water patient takes during the previous two days or the excess water or the weight gain has to be removed in the 4 hour session. So, there will be rapid removal of fluid during dialysis during which the patient can develop hypotension. Other complications can also develop like headache, muscle cramps or weakness and there can be drop in blood glucose levels also. So, these are the complications which are usually associated with hemodialysis. <laughs> Compared to hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis can be done at home and patient can do his own uh, peritoneal dialysis by instilling fluid into his abdomen and uh, he can go for uh, his routine job and also do the procedure uh, at home during night and can also instill the fluid uh, at his workplace based on his uh, convenience. So, the compared to peritoneal uh, hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis gives flexibility to the patient. He need not come to hospital for uh, three times per week uh, sessions and the complications which are associated with hemodialysis like uh, drop in blood pressure, drop in blood glucose and cramps, these are less common and does not usually will not happen in patients with peritoneal dialysis. The complications which are associated with peritoneal dialysis are different. The first and the most important one is the risk of infection. The fluid which we instill into the abdomen in patients with peritoneal dialysis is rich in glucose or dextrose. So, this is in this fluid bacteria can easily grow. So, strict aseptic precautions or the neatness is very very important for peritoneal dialysis or else it can lead to peritoneal infection. The sec other complications which can be associated with peritoneal dialysis are weight gain, increase in uh, sugar levels in the blood and increase uh, in the lipid levels in the blood. So, as I have already mentioned, the indication for dialysis can be permanent kidney failure called as end stage kidney disease or acute kidney injury. If it is an acute kidney injury, usually dialysis will be done till the time kidneys uh, recover by themselves. Whereas in patients with end stage kidney disease, dialysis should be done lifelong or until the patient uh, 
gets a kidney transplantation. In a patient who is having kidney failure and who is advised to get permanent hemodialysis uh, thrice a week or a peritoneal dialysis at home, if he stops hemodialysis, uh, the waste products get accumulated in the body and the water which he usually takes uh, daily will get accumulated in the body as the urine output will be less in these patients and, and there will be changes in the blood electrolyte levels like alterations in the calcium, sodium, potassium levels and there will also be excess accumulation of acid in the body. The most important complications which can happen if a patient stops dialysis is the excess water in the body which can go into the lungs and can lead to difficulty breathing and also a life threatening uh, situation. Compared to uh, the other complication which can also happen is rise in potassium levels in the blood that can lead to uh, heartbeat irregularities and it can also be a life threatening situation. So hemodialysis if it is advised permanently should not be stopped without consulting a nephrologist. With regards to efficiency, both hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis are equal. But as I have already told, hemodialysis has its own advantages and complications and peritoneal dialysis has its own advantages and complications. So the choice of hemodialysis depends on factors like patient's choice and the condition at home whether the patient is self-reliant or not and the complications which usually happen in the patient. If we take a uh, choice of the patient, some patients uh, will be more comfortable if they come to uh, a dialysis unit three times per week and uh, get the dialysis and be free for the rest of the week. Whereas few other patients can remain, uh, remain at home and they can do the procedure at home at their uh, comfort and also complications like some patients may not tolerate hemodialysis like there may be drop in uh, blood pressure or they can have severe headache or complications related to uh, hemodialysis or there may be no access like AV fistula cannot be created in such patients with multiple uh, failure uh, of the procedures. In such patients peritoneal dialysis will be chosen and patients who are not self-reliant cannot do uh, peritoneal dialysis by themselves usually we advise hemodialysis in such patients and uh, patients who are having recurrent infections and there are some complications of the abdomen like uh, previous surgeries and all in which patients in these patients we cannot place a peritoneal uh, dialysis catheter so in such patients we advise hemodialysis so the choice of uh, hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis depends on the uh, uh, few factors which i have discussed with regards to the efficiency, both are same.